Hey guys, Brito here, welcome back to Farming Simulator 2019. Here we are back in No Man's Land. Uh, I was hoping today we could go and do a bit of harvesting, but um, it looks like at the moment that the crops are still too wet for us to actually go and harvest. So a few things I want to look at is our animals. We need some straw in there which we can sort out. Um, some wheat, barley, that sort of stuff. Um, looking at the prices now, wheat and barley. Wheat is really good price. It's the highest it's been. So is oats. We've got plenty of wheat and oats as you can see here. Wheat, oats. So I'm thinking we're going to go and sell our wheat and our oats. Let's have a look in here again. Wheat and oats. Yep. And we can use our barley for here and some canola. So I think selling our wheat and oats is going to be the way to go. I'm going to use the truck because it's a little bit quicker um, obviously than using our tractor. Our tractor is quite slow but this truck should be able to handle it. It's um, listed. It's pretty beefy. Should have plenty of horsepower to get this thing towed. So we've also spoken to the local council as well. They've said that we need to at least fill in We'll put fences up around a BGA, around the back side of the BGA. So I'll show you guys what I mean when we get down there. Um, just to sort of keep people out, keep them from wandering in. And just in case the wind does change a little bit, try and stop that smell from travelling too far from here to up here. It looks like, yeah, they've actually got the, um, the bunkers built in too. So that's a good thing. So they said that we need to put a fence from at least like our entrance. So here somewhere go around and around this way and back up again at least put our fence in around here up to this back part but I'm thinking might as well just go the whole way around like why not it's probably going to be the way to go two little silage bunkers I shouldn't say little they're still pretty bloody big so there's plenty of stuff we can do in there as far as silage goes it makes them a little bit more money Right, so we're going to get this wheat sold. We'll head past our little housing estate. I believe there is, um, I think three of these have been sold from what I hear. So there should be people, some people moving in soon. Which is good to see. Greenhouses, they aren't actually using their greenhouses yet. Um, we have also spoke to the council about the greenhouses. They've asked us to supply the water and manure for... We'll see the people inside there, so we'll need to bring some manure back, some water back, um, get both of them up and running, and hopefully um, when people move in, they'll start to take care of it. Alright, so we'll head up here to the shop, get this trailer full of wheat sold, we'll head back down and get our oats. Alright, there we go, get our wheat sold. It's going to be decent amount of money, not a massive amount, but about 13, 15,000. There you go, 14, 7, pretty close. Somewhere in the middle between 13 and 15. I wonder what this is for. Can we actually buy anything out of here? We can. Barley, oats, canola. We can buy a bit of everything. We could buy grass. I wonder if we can buy grass and how much it costs us. $1,200. We could take this down and fill up these bunkers with grass. And we could sell that as silage. That's interesting. I didn't realize we could actually buy anything from there, but that's pretty cool. $1,200 from there to there, which is 21,000 litres. It's 450 a litre. So 1100 we can turn into about $10,500. That's nearly, you know, 10 times profit. That is pretty cool. That's something that we could we could look at doing as a bit of a time lapse, I think. You know, filling our trailer up, bringing it down, dumping it in, and bringing our dozer back and have our dozer run over it to compact it down a little bit. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Um, I won't do it for a little while. I'll let you guys decide whether you think that's a good thing or is that cheating. I mean... Obviously people cut grass and sell grass and we're pretty much just buying it, turning it into silage and, and then selling it, so 
I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. Right, we'll dump it right at the back here. Hopefully that doesn't go through, it shouldn't. Right, we'll just roll forward just a tiny little bit. It's going to take us quite a while to fill this up, as you can see. That's 20,000 litres. This is going to take a million litres. Probably a million litres, I would think. It's going to be quite interesting if we can get that completely full. Right, so we'll head back and get our oats. Get our oats now. Gonna we'll have to load up some manure into here. Um, should have a little bit of manure, probably not a massive amount. Little tiny bit of manure. At least we know we can buy seeds and stuff from up there, which is pretty good. Didn't look for pig food though. Uh, oats, 27,000 litres, so we're going to have to come back for a second load of oats, I think. Let's have a look. How's our grass actually going? Is it is it grown again, ready to harvest? It is over here. That's a huge amount of grass we can actually get. Ah, this is ready to go. That's not quite ready yet. The corn and the soybeans. We're still waiting for those to to grow through. There's a little bit of manure in there. Not too much. Have a quick look. Manure. Uh, we're going to have about 2,000 litres of manure if we're lucky. So there's not a lot, but that might be enough, enough to give each of those... Um, those greenhouses like a thousand litres each maybe probably not we probably don't need to do it right now as I said there's no one's moved in just yet they're gonna be uh, moving in shortly so just have to wait and see did us also talk to them about uh, maintenance of um, the grass and that inside the area he said that they're gonna hire like their own little landscaper to come through and work there full time and to take care of those hedges and stuff we put in and and the trees and the grass and stuff so we don't actually need to go back and take care of any of that which is a bonus I guess this is where we're going to put in our yeah yeah our sausage factory we still need to work out where we're going to get the approval for our salt factory that's one thing that I need to still talk to the local council about I was sort of hoping down at the bottom of field 27 there somewhere. Um, like down in here somewhere or down, I don't know, down in here. Not quite sure where it's going to go. I want to sort of keep it close to where our water source is. I think that's probably the most important thing. Look at that, $37,000, $38,000 for that. That is a good amount of money. All right, let's grab... Pig food, manure, fertilizer, straw, hay, grass. We'll grab some more grass while we're here. Just a little bit. We'll throw some more in there. As I said, you guys let me know what you think about, about doing this with the grass. Probably going to need a truck and a trailer. Like something something decent. Something with you know like 100,000 litre capacity or something to get this filled up pretty quick. Um, yeah, going to take us forever otherwise. Still really like this little stage one of our state. It's going to come all the way out and around here. So I'm not sure what their plans on on the rest of it is. If it's all just going to be houses or something, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll have to wait and see. A lot of parking out the front. A lot of grass out the side there. There's plenty of places for them to go and hang out and, and do what they want to do. Right, let's back this guy in again. Dump off another load. Alright, there we go. Just want to try and keep it the same height like the whole way through. I think we, we will be able to come back and dump on top of this, but if we keep it the same height from back to front the whole way through like this, then we should at least have like a ramp to be able to get up on top if we need to. 
We have to bring a dozer down and get the dozer up on top. We have to put the fences around to sort of cover that whole area in. Our pigs are doing pretty well. I think we've got like five out of ten or six out of ten that are currently you know, pregnant and going to have some little pickies. So slowly, slowly going to increase the number of pigs we have. Just all going to take time. I did go through and fully fertilize um, all of our fields that we've already harvested. So they're all ready to go for next year. We need to come back through and cultivate to get them ready for next year as well. And then we can just, you know, see when the time comes in the new year, I guess. So we'll go and dump this next load of oats off. Get another load of grass, bring it down and and that's all we'll do for the grass for now. You guys let me know what you think. If it's if it's if you guys think it's cheating, we won't do it. If you guys are okay with it, then we'll do it. We'll fill it right up and we'll make tons and tons of cash. It's a beautiful spot in here. Anything I think they need is maybe some lights or something. Didn't put any lights in, we have to wait for electrician to come through and run some power and stuff which they would have done by now obviously so I think some of those really old lamps would be nice to put in the area so some people have asked me as well where we get fuel from I'm not sure if you guys would have seen it but on the other side of this shop where the animals are around there there's a fuel bowser that's where you buy your fuel from if you need to get fuel We did obviously get fuel in a previous episode, but some people may not have seen that. Missed it, but there we go. That's 40 something thousand, I think, we just made from those oats, which is awesome. Right, let's get to our grass. Have a bit of a look at our income today um, 63,000 for our harvest income, which is pretty good. Can't complain with that at all. So I think once this is done, we're going to have to yeah, keep an eye on when we can get in and get that harvest done because I'm a little concerned that it's going to it's going to rain again tomorrow um, and it's going to be really cold. So the only thing we can do is turn crop moisture off. Does that make a difference? I don't know if that makes a difference. 20% crop moisture does there we go now if we turn it back on it turns it back on again which I think we're gonna just have to turn it off as long as it's not raining we should be able to harvest it you guys let me know should we have crop moisture on or off potentially if there's too much rain in the area we're not gonna be able to harvest all of our fields which is gonna be gonna be frustrating we're not gonna have any money sort of coming through Right, try not to bang off the wall too much. So that's our sunflowers that we're getting here. Now what's the cheapest thing? Sunflowers, canola. So we could probably... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we could probably sell the sunflowers straight away. Depending. We'll have a look. Where's our sunflowers in here? It's a pretty good price for our sunflowers. We got F1, what do we got? 62,000 and 1% compaction, so it's going to take us forever to get this completely compacted, but we can set up a, um, a course play course and bring the dozer down and get the dozer on top, run it backwards or forwards and that sort of stuff. Alright, well, we've got a little bit of time, so we might head down and start to harvest, turn that crop moisture off and see how it goes. So you guys have got a few things to let me know this episode. Crop moisture on or off? Buy grass, turn into silage and sell? Yes or no? You guys let me know what you think. As I've said previously, I want you guys to have plenty of input in this series, so you guys let me know what you think. Oh, drifting. I like the idea of um, buying the grass and turning into silage and selling it because you know, I sold a 
plenty of grass early on and hay and that sort of stuff so people in the area or on the outskirts are going to be doing the same thing as us cutting grass selling grass because they don't have the ability to turn it into silage so if we can um why not all right here we go we get our sunflowers harvested it's probably not going to be a huge yield um, out of this field but shouldn't be too bad bit of a view from inside of the harvester that handrail sort of ends a little bit weird there doesn't it, it should curve back down do love this old harvester though it's pretty cool we might get um so we might get a full trailer load if we're lucky We've got about 15, 1600 litres by the time we finish this run. It is quite slow at unloading too, isn't it? Right, we'll do a run up this way. We normally do the full headland run around the outside. I'm more than happy to turn the crop moisture off. Um, as I said, you guys just let me know. I don't want it to feel like we're cheating or anything. We might need to look for a, a geo. I so said I think I want to make this like an American, an American theme. I know that um, obviously it was not built as far as an American map goes, but. It's no man's land, it's an empty map, we can do whatever we like with it. So if you want to turn it into an American theme map, an American location, we can. So if I can find somewhere with, you know, an American geo, which is nice and warm and not a massive amount of rain and that sort of stuff, I think I think that'll be a good thing if we could if we could do that. Just make it um, so we have to leave like the crop stuff on, crop moisture and everything like that. We're up to 2,000 litres, so it's going to take us a fair while to get this field done and I'm not going to get a massive yield out of it, as I said, but it's still going to be decent enough. This field to do, we've got the corn field to do, then we've got to come back through and get our soybean field, which is going to be huge amount of money in that soybean field that's why we're going to make enough to be able to build our house eventually and 400,000 to get our house done and to clear that that little bit of land that we need to clear to get our house put up into there right, what is it 1 30 in the afternoon so we've still got plenty of time to get the rest of this done we need to come back and come back and you know fertilize and stuff again and come back through and cultivate all of our fields might just go back to running up and down now got a headland done around the outside should get another full run up full run back and then we can unload to our trailer we're not going to have a massive amount of sunflowers It's really going to be a very, very small amount. It's not a massive field, but I'm happy with the fields we've created so far and the sizes and that sort of stuff. I know a few people have commented saying, why do you make the fields so small? Like, the bigger they are, the more money you make. Um, I do understand that. And some people are cool with having big fields. Me personally, with a Let's Play series like this, the smaller the fields, the better. That way I can come through and harvest, you know, three, four, five fields in an episode. Um, whereas if we had one massive field like over there, it'll take me a good hour or something to harvest and just be not as good, I guess, as a Let's Play. So. That's pretty much the main reason why, and we can also, you know, 
put every single crop in the ground, not just have to do just soybeans to make money. I think next year they will focus on um, the crops that we need for our pigs, so we'll need to put in some wheat or barley, uh, one field for our pigs, and then we want to put in a cornfield for our pigs, and we also want to put in like a canola or sunflowers or something for our pigs as well. So even these three fields here could be our pig fields. Uh, we could class this as the fields that we that we plant that are just for our pigs. So it's per permanently, you know, this one's permanently canola, that one's permanently wheat, this one behind us is permanently corn. These three fields as our, our pig feed fields. And the rest we can do, you know, the money crops, soybeans and um, oats and canola and that sort of stuff. Up to 95% we should have unloaded while we're down the other end. I did look at it, but I didn't think it would be full by the time we got to this end, but we are going to be full right about now. There we go. All right, we'll have to go up and unload. Try not to run over too much of our crop. Finally, harvesting some sunflowers. While we're unloading this, this will give me a chance to get a screenshot, hopefully. Right. Up this here. If anybody wants to know what I use for screenshots, it's called the... I'm sure it's called like the player action camera. There we go. And I'll also take the screenshot inside Farm Simulator, not through Steam or anything. Gonna have a decent amount out of here. So what's that gonna be about ten or twelve thousand liters? Plus a little bit more. So we might have sixteen to twenty thousand liters of canola. So it's gonna be about thirty two, thirty five thousand out of this field, which isn't too bad. Um yeah, 150,000 for our salt factory, which is quite big. A um, little bit of lag. There we go. I was thinking somewhere like over here. This factory, if we put it down here, it's too big for down there. Um, too big for there. Maybe like over here is a good spot for it. Reasonably flat. Somewhere over here. I think that'll be a good spot, the salt factory down there, which just means we're going to have to purchase field 34. Yeah, purchase, purchase field 34 we're going to have to do if you want to do that. And obviously look at doing our pigs and stuff later on. As far as the salt factory goes, I don't really need to go through and, you know, um, add any details or anything to like around it like fences or trees or anything it's already got fences around it which is pretty cool not going to need to add trees or anything we'll just try and work out exactly how much room we're going to need and obviously push it in with our dozer as we always have to get the ground ready to stick some buildings on let the guys know where we want it they'll come through and build it for us and um Happy days, we can start making some salt ready for our pig factory. Or our sausage factory, I should say. I'm still hoping um, this time next year we're going to have, you know, a hundred or so pigs. A huge amount of pigs, hopefully. We're going to continue to need to buy more pigs. Hopefully we're going to continue to have more pigs having babies and that sort of stuff. And let's continue to expand our our pig empire. Alright, this field's nearly finished. Hopefully our corn and our 
soybeans will be ready to harvest tomorrow. Fingers crossed, they're not ready to go yet, so fingers crossed, we'll be ready to go tomorrow, especially those soybeans, we need those. We need the corn for the pigs, but those soybeans are what's going to get us to that next level as far as income goes to be able to be able to um, build our sausage factory and salt factory, all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be an integral part of us making a huge amount of cash to be able to get that done. Right, this should be our last, our last pass, hopefully. Go and unload this thing and then park him up down there ready to get our corn done hopefully tomorrow don't really like leaving it out in the weather but yeah, she's a pretty old pretty old harvester anyway so it's used to being left out in the weather anyway let's get these couple of little bits that we've missed still missed one right unload this and then go and sell our sunflowers Look at our pigs, so we've got one, so it's two, three, four, five, five that are pregnant. Some that'll be due in a couple of days, I think. Right, boom, there we go. Move this guy up to here so we can get ready for tomorrow's harvest, hopefully. We'll head back through with our trailer, or our half trailer full of sunflowers. Head back towards the, the shop, get these guys sold, and then I think we'll call it an episode. Gonna have to get those fences organised around the BGA, you might get that done. Um, sometime today I might make a phone call and get the guys down to some fences up and hopefully by tomorrow it'll all be finished or some stage tomorrow it's only going to be like a I think a white wooden fence or even like just a plain wooden fence I think the guys were saying is probably the cheapest thing we can go with um, the council was happy with that it should block out the majority of the smell um, and even with the wood there the wood should sort of soak up a bit of the smell before it actually gets through and over to here which Hopefully it won't get that far over here, but you never know. Windmill, that windmill turns. You must follow where the wind is. It's pretty cool. She's still spinning. All right, so our pig, our pig factory, sausage factory is going to be up here. Just going to be this land and this land brought. So that's. You know, 170,000 for there, plus a 250 to build it. So 430,000 or whatever to get our sausage factory put in there. I say house is 400,000, so that's 830,000 plus you know, salt factory, 150. So that's 980 plus more land. So 11, 1 million, 100,000 pretty much we're going to need. So right out guys, we'll end the episode here. If you guys enjoyed this one, as always, smash that like button. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of the idea about the grass into there. Um, and having the the crop wetness off so we can cut it when it's um, finished raining and that sort of stuff. Just like the vanilla sort of game. And if you guys are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, guys, please do so. It's been Brito, thanks for watching. See you again soon.